Well, YouTube, if there's one pointless unit that people insist on more than Balthasar Gelt for me to use, it would actually be the Black Coach. <laughs> and sure enough, here we have one. Not just one, but two. So if I show you a battle with two Black Coaches, does that mean that I get twice as long before you all beg me for more Black Coach? <laughs> <laughs> Hope you all ready to enjoy some, uh, obviously, what's going to be interesting gameplay. So, Sternsman, two Graveguard, two Horrors, Claw of Nagash, um, Blood Knight with the Red Duke. The Red Duke is a very popular Vampire Lord right now. Very, very popular. There's some Fell Bats. Let's take a look at the, the Dwarf side of the battlefield. And we're going to see um, Warriors with Great Weapons, Dwarf Warriors, backed up by some more Warriors with Great Weapons, the Peak Gate Guard, Ekron Miners, Slayers, Slayers, and Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. Now, the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass can actually be pretty decent versus Crypt Horrors. Uh, Ulthar's Raiders are a great choice for tearing down key enemy units in a hurry. Thorgrim uh, actually has his High King and Book of Grudges up, so he should be... Uh, giving some nice buffs to the units around him, and indeed he is. And then the Runesmith uh, has the same, so he'll be adding extra buffs to the units around him as well. So let's see how it goes. Now, there's one time, uh, there's sometimes mistakes that people make. Let's get this Runesmith. Damage resistance, leadership. Okay, no, he did not make the mistake of bringing the rune that protects against missiles. Sometimes people make that mistake with the vampire, so just watch out for that. One of the runes in the runesmith, you may think more is better, but that one doesn't do anything because the vampires don't have missiles. So, gotta watch out for that one. So the Red Duke is... let's check out the spells he's supporting. So he's got El Sif, which is a great one. Absolutely great ability. Arcane Conduit, Foe Seeker, so Curse of Years, good way to take away all the melee attack from the uh, Dwarves. Their speed won't really matter, then we got Invocation to Heck. So, what the heck? Is this a Vampire Army with no Raise the Dead? This is the Vampire Army with no Raise the Dead. Well, there you go, you people always complain about Raise the Dead being OP, no Raise the Dead. And that is a pretty big risk against the Dwarves, because they can have so many Skirmishers. But it looks like the Dwarf player only brought one Skirmisher unit, expecting a ton of Raise the Dead. So maybe that was the trick by the Vampire player, was just to confuse the Dwarf player as to what they were bringing. Let's fast forward. The bats are kind of fainting back and forth, I don't know, maybe just trying to keep the Dwarf player's attention. They look like hummingbirds when it's in fast forward, that's pretty funny looking. Now the Horrors combined with Graveguard with no more than just a single unit of rangers with great weapons, should be able to get some damage done. I mean, if that single ranger focuses them out, it could be bad. The Claw of Nagash just has to avoid that ranger, and otherwise it should stay in pretty good shape because it can slow down the dwarves enough to keep them from catching it. And that's the risk also of not bringing a lot of, uh... Okay, so the ranger with the great weapons immediately tied down by the bats. Great choice. Now let's watch the uh, Black Coach. Here comes one from this flank, busting straight through. Now remember the Black Coach has like kind of cascading benefits that I think the longer it's in combat, it starts to unlock and use more of these, these benefits. So like if I look at the Black Coach here. Yeah, and it should start popping up as they're in combat longer. So the Black Coach gets a first run in, only gets a couple of kills, which is to be expected because you gotta damage dwarves, uh, or any any uh, unit up pretty good to get that started. Let's see if either one of them, neither one of them had any of those special abilities rolling just yet. The Claw of Nagash is just kind of holding back. That's probably a good choice. Look at Thorgrim trying to catch a Black Coach. That is not gonna happen. And the Cryptors kind of working in concert with the other units here, trying to break their way through. One of them is taking significant damage. Here comes the Claw of Nagash, trying to kind of wreck through the lines, but Pretty thick dwarf formation there. Thorgrim gets caught out by two black coaches and a blood knight. So this is why you don't chase things with the dwarf ward. You do not leave the defensive geometry of the uh, brothers of the clan. Because you're going to get caught in a uh, combat like this, and it is not going to be pretty. Thorgrim is going to die very, very quickly. Now, the vampire army is taking a beating at the hands of the somewhat superior dwarf infantry. But the Black Coach, or the Claw of Nagash is kind of running around like crazy now. And we're starting to get some of the buffs popped up on the uh, Black Coach. Both of them do. This one's got two of them going on. 
It's crumbling though too, but if it stays near the Mortis engine, that should help it heal quicker. So yeah, the Runesmith's popping out there. Thorgrim gets wrecked. There's a bunch of Slayers and Warriors with great weapons coming in. The cavalry is going to want to steer clear of that. And the Claw of Nagash is engaged with the Runesmith, which this is a very bad place for it to be. And you can also see that the, uh, the Rangers with great weapons have singled out the Claw of Nagash. And it needs to get away very, very quickly. And it should be able to do so. Got the Rune of Wrath and Ruin on the Blood Knights. It's a great choice. And the Red Duke's going to finish off uh, Thorgrim. Which means that this infantry fight down here will last for quite a bit longer. The Slayers, though, have a potential to get rid of these Cryptors relatively quick. But it would open them up to rear charges from the Blood Knights. And also just being pestered by the Mortis Engine. And the Mortis Engine is crumbling. Really needs to go get near the Red Duke. And get a leadership buff or get near some of its other units. The Rangers with great weapons are actually kind of charging around in here. That's a big mistake because the uh, Blood Knights were there momentarily. It really needs to... Okay, so the Invocation to Heck may cause this unit to stop crumbling if it if it's able to uh, build up enough of its hit points. The leadership's popping back up there, so... Probably due to the presence of the Red Duke. Let's get up close and check out some of the uh, combat. Here's one of the black coaches that you all want to see all the time. Looks like it's kind of just staying in combat. Let's check out the buffs that come on it. So this one gives it uh, damage resistance and strider. And then it does fire damage, armor piercing. So very interesting. It actually does some pretty serious weapon damage. It's got 36 kills at this point, which is honestly not bad. And it's got some pretty serious buffs going on. Uh, here's the other coach over here, and it's got all those things going as well, but this one's crumbling due to damage. But I mean, 40 kills there, 34 kills there. Not a ton on the black coach, but they're definitely cool units. There comes the upgraded invocation in the heck. Should keep these units alive for a decent bit longer, and then the mortis engine. The dwarf warriors here are not immune to psychology, and being rear charged by a mortis engine or other vampire units nearby that cause terror, there is potential here for a terror route, especially with Thorgrim gone. If the Runesmith is gone, which he's not, and he did get hit with El Sif though, which means he's going to be causing very little damage in return to anything that attacks him. This Black Coach, yeah, 46 kills, not bad, not bad. 51 kills here too. It's picked up a Chevron, so they're important kills. Same thing here. So, I mean, that's not bad at all. If you're picking up a Chevron on a unit, I don't know if it makes it cost effective, but it at least means that it's getting some worthwhile kills. See the Cryptors pounding away. The Blood Knights back here getting rid of the Ulthar's Raiders. Uh, though the Runesmith still stands strong. Some of these uh, Dwarf heroes can be pretty tanky. Now I'm not sure what the Slayers were missing here on an opportunity. Um, the Black Coaches in here about to die. At least one of them is. Ooh, it is it's close. But the Claw of Nagash is going to be healing units nearby. And then ripping apart the uh, hit points from the Dwarves and slowing them down. And it also terrorizes. These Slayers are going to try and intercept the charge of the Blood Knights. And the Blood Knights are going to pull out. They are going to have to watch it. They might start crumbling. They're okay for now, though. The Red Duke is over here. I'm surprised how long these Dwarf Warriors are holding on. Rune of Oath and Steel here. The Master Rune of Oath and Steel is actually pretty good now. It gives 60 armor to the units within its radius. Look at that Mortis engine. This uh, Black Coach is still in the fight over here. Two of them still in the fight. I figured one of them would be dead by now, but I guess the Dwarves are being slowly whittled away. How does the Coach do for armor? 60 armor? Yeah, neither one of them can heal. Uh, well, at least that one can't heal. That one can't heal either. They're done healing, but I mean, 70 kills. It's well on its way to a second Chevron. 54 kills here. I mean, it's really not bad. It's really not bad. Thorgrim came back? Are you joking? He's going to get killed by the coach. There you go, people. Thorgrim Grudgebearer, if you're watching this video, is that a grudging? Does the black coach make the book? I mean, you got some revenge on that one, but there's still one other black coach. And it looks like it's about to go down, too. I like how you can see like the coffin bouncing around the back. There's slayers here, and they're unbreakable. And then there's some uh, 
the Grumbling Guard here is going to be important too because it means that the uh, Dwarf units won't be tired. So both Black Coaches now down. Look, there's nothing in the coffin. What's the fun of that? You didn't think I'd notice that, did you, C8? Alright, so the Slayers are going to die. Um, but wow, that ended up being a stupidly close battle. I didn't notice how close it was getting, but with the Claw of Nagash alive, I mean, there's literally nothing the Dwarves could have done anyway in the late game, so it ended up being really close. If the Vampire player really wanted to be a crotch, they could have just kited uh, the Dwarves with the uh, Mortis Engine and, like, kept all their other troops alive. But um, they came up here and fought it out. Look at the, to the last Slayer. Get him. Okay, I guess he just died of a heart attack there or something. <laughs> that was a fun battle. Two black coaches. See, there you go, two black coaches. So don't come complaining to me like you haven't seen some black co coach action. And this one got two experience chevrons. So black coach, actually pretty entertaining. And I, and I would say if you are going to ever use the black coach against someone, the dwarves are probably a likely target um, because they don't have as much to deal with the black coach or chariots in general for that reason. Ulthar's Raider is a quite capable unit, um, or if you end up with a lot of Thunders or something else, you would definitely have to watch out. But again, with Raise the Dead, which was oddly absent from this battle, um, it can still make it very difficult for those units to get to your Black Coach. But I like all the different specialty units that the Vampire used here. It's pretty fun. And the Dwarf player, I mean, this, so here's another thing, too, that people don't realize. Like, And you saw it here. The Dwarves were pretty much just as resilient as the Vampires, who had all their healing and stuff. So a dwarf with all the buffs from Thorgrim and then the uh, runesmith's protection from Oath and Steel and the uh, Rune of Negation, or if you throw a Master Runesmith in there, it's pretty serious. And, I mean, you saw the dwarves here outlast a pretty withering assault from the vampires to the point where they darn near won. Again, there wasn't much they could have done about the Mortis Engine. But, still, I mean, just to show you that... Uh, so don't underestimate dwarves. <laughs> Do not underestimate them. These guys can withstand a gruesome beating in combat and uh, that's one of the things that makes them a pretty fun faction to play as hope you all enjoyed this one uh, I appreciate you coming to watch it if you enjoy it and you want to see more I suggest you subscribe my logo is in the bottom right hand corner and it helps me out a lot and keeps you up to date with the latest videos appreciate MSI sponsoring the motherboard in my build they are fantastic and I always appreciate their support and I hope to see you all back on the battlefields of Warhammer or another Total War sometime soon Air of Carthage Signing out.